In its magically beautiful setting by the Golden Gate, the Palace of Fine Arts, the last surviving memory of the Phantom City, still proudly stands in stately grandeur and where Palace of Fairyland have been replaced by countless homes. Turning back the pages of time, we find President William Howard Taft breaking ground on February the 25th, 1911, for the Phantom City. And then after an army of architects, artists, and engineers had dreamed their best dreams and had brought them to life, it was ready. Magnificent courts and fountains, its walls of creamy travertine, its ever-blooming gardens stretching along the shores of the Golden Gate. At a signal from President Wilson, the fountain of energy burst into activity. The gates were thrown open and the world had its first glimpse of a phantom city. What a sight and what a crowd, all eager to explore its mysteries and marvel at its splendor. Mayor James Ralph Jr. dedicated the Phantom City. Charles Seymour, its president, spoke in response. Secretary Franklin K. Lane represented President Wilson and Governor Hiram Johnson spoke for California. It was a great day and a great crowd the Tower of Jewels, beautiful beyond description, sparkling with hundreds of thousands of multicolored jewels in the brilliant sun or in the night illumination, it was the central and dominant feature of the Phantom City. In the center of the lovely South Gardens, the Fountain of Energy, flanked on either side by twin mermaid pools, greeted the eye of the visitor. And to the left was the Crystal Dome Palace of Horticulture, Byzantine in architecture, suggesting the Mosque of Ahmed I in Constantinople, housing within strange and beautiful plants from all the tropical world. To the right, Festival Hall, a shrine where music lovers worshipped and where world-famous notables spoke to huge gatherings. And just back of the tower was the court of the universe with the two famous statues, the rising sun and the setting sun. Now the court of abundance embraced the beautiful fountain of the earth. The Fountain Series graced the symbolic court of Four Seasons. The Court of Palms, with a sunken pool containing that beloved statue, the end of the trail. Majestic colonnades surrounded the Court of Flowers and the Beauty and Beast Fountain. The Fine Arts Palace, with its priceless art treasures, in its exquisite setting by the lagoon, will live in memory forever. Sculptors from all over the world brought their skill to adorn the Phantom City. Every school of art was represented. Palaces and courts and fountains all carried their quarter of sculptural beauty. These few statues are but a reminder of the countless others just as lovely and the distances were magnificent. Now here's a glimpse down the avenue of palms, a vision of breathtaking beauty. 
Machinery Hall Avenue lit past the largest wooden building ever constructed and where was staged the only indoor flight in aviation history. There's only a time for a glimpse of the many state and foreign buildings, picturesque and individual, and housing rare exhibits from the far corners of the earth. Remember the little auto trains rushing busily about? The electric chairs, they're not dangerous, but uh, stubborn. And the one-man push chairs? Well, pedestrians, though, were in the majority. And the four million square feet of pavement echoed to the beat of tired feet. Never was a more welcome guest than the Liberty Bell, carried all the way from Philadelphia in a flower deck car, symbolizing the spirit of American freedom. The magic of his own invention brings back the Thomas Edison of a bygone day, with his pal, Henry Ford, in a happy, carefree moment. Uh -uh. And just look at this automobile race. Here they come, with all two cylinders roaring. Hey, hey, hey. Look out there. <laughs> yeah, not even four-wheel brakes would slow up these speed demons. Styles have changed since 1915, haven't they? And look at this merry widow waltz, or uh, uh, is it the grizzly bear? Ah, no, no, don't laugh. You'd ask that way too. <laughs> you know, look, it was on the playground of the Phantom City, a mile of gaiety. And uh, do you remember Stella, the submarines, the aeroscope? <laughs> you know, here all the nations of the earth came to play. The Indians shook their eagle feathers, the Samoans and the Maoris danced their ritual rhythms to tom-toms beating, and the Mexicans danced to the soft guitar. You know, I wonder where these little maypole dancers are today. Rid of all the concessions with the five-acre miniature of the Panama Canal, with real water, the locks and lakes and ships all performing for the delighted spectators who viewed the spectacle from a traveling train. Uh, here are the Daffodil Girls, all dolled up to visit the Phantom City. You know, many organizations, long forgotten, paraded gaily through these grounds. That day, a boy in his teens, Art Lindbergh never had a heartier reception. Assembling his suicide plane, fashioned from bamboo, the motor perched just behind the aviator's head, looks strangely unfamiliar in this day of 20 passenger cabin planes. But remember, Art Smith was a pioneer. Mr. Lincoln Beachy, aviation martyr of the Phantom City. Peter Rossi, another pioneer, was willing to take long chances with such a flimsy set of wings flapping wires and bicycle wheels, but he did almost anything in the air that modern flyers can do. Art. Aviators were daredevils in 1915, and the crowd loved them. A hero Smith on his perilous perch is getting ready for the first illuminated night flight in aviation history. Over the brilliant lights of the Phantom City, he soared and dived and looped, with strings of fire behind him like twin comets blazing across the uncharted skyways. Then, swooping to earth, the wings of his plane, a mass of flames, a uh, never-to-be-forgotten thrill. And do you remember the Phantom City at night? All the beauty in the world seemed concentrated there. Buildings were bathed in a soft radiance of colored light, while the fountains glistened with a myriad of color. Great rainbows were cast on clouds of steam, and there were no real clouds to reflect the light. And then, in December 1915, the last lights of the Phantom City flickered out, its fountains forever silenced, we stood with tear-dimmed eyes, feeling that it was not the end, but only 
a beginning.